Yeah. You're welcome back. Yeah. Now, even though the Auditor General's department says it is ready to present the document of about 3,600 teachers to the Ministry of Finance for them to be paid their two years salary arrears, some teachers say the issues go beyond just payment. Earlier this year, three teacher unions, the Ghana National Association of Teachers, the National Association of Graduate Teachers, NAGRAT, and the Coalition of Concerned Teachers threatened to go on a strike if all outstanding monies owed them were not paid by the end of February 2016. This was, however, averted when government assured the teachers' associations that their monies would be paid. Uh, that has been done, but the teacher unions still have some issues. So we'll get an understanding of the exact concern. Joining me on the phone lines now is Deputy Communications Director of the Concerned Teachers Union, Norbert Bobochi. Uh, good morning, Norbert. Thanks for your time. Uh, good morning, mm. madam. So help us appreciate your outstanding issues, exactly. All right, thank you very much. Um, so far, um, as you got the message last um, two weeks ago, we received about 50,000 forms from across the length and breadth of the country. And uh, by the close of the 13th, of which we were about to break or we were breaking, we had attended to 10,600 forms. And out of that 10,600 forms, only 4,000 had validated. And the government is not happy at all with the rate at which a majority of forms are perused and just a little number sales through. Therefore, what we have decided together with government is that we go out there um, look for those teachers that have uh, presented their documents and uh, still that are not enough for validation to go through. So we go look for the rest of the documents. You see, some of them uh, get to the point that uh, they presented documents without EW, that is establishment warrant. Some also presented a document without input form. And uh, if you look through, there are some documents that uh, you cannot do away with uh, in case you want uh, an amount of money to be paid to each individual. So these are some of the challenges we face, and we are asked to go out there, get the rest of the documents, come and peruse, and make sure that we validate the 50,000 uh, 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 chunk of data that we have in front of us for 15th of April. So, so far, that is what we have done. Mm. How, how have we also handled uh, the allegations of some teachers using fake certificates? Yeah, it's true. It's true. As we were perusing this document, we came across um, some few. If you look at the percentage, I don't think it will be up to even 1%. Uh, so we have come across some one or two uh, challenges of that sort. The Auditor General is also doing well by not just nullifying or throwing the documents away, but going deep into inviting such individuals to come and uh, justify the certificate they have presented. If there is a case of any fraudulent action, I think that uh, they will be brought before book. And let me also state that there is a news and a, a, a rumor going around that the uh, government is clearing the outstanding arrear. Yeah, it is true. The government is clearing the outstanding arrear. But the 3,600 news that is out there is for those that have not gone through validation, those that have not been given staff ID, those that have not gone through the biometric registration, but they are teachers that are still on the field of teaching. If you could remember, uh, government gave a directive, or GS gave a directive that there is ban on recruitment, the education sector. But it's rather unfortunate the directory, that the district directory and the regional directory did not heed to this directive. And they recruited people, uh, let me say, when they were not supposed uh, to, to have. So what is happening is that whether... Uh, the person was recruited rightly or falsely. We still need uh, to pay them because they have been in the system for two, three years. 
After careful argument between the teacher unions and government, government finally agreed that uh, those people paid. And that ordered direct, uh, Auditor General last year, October, to go around, collate, and uh, validate their document. And uh, that is the one that is ready now. And if you look at the number, the number is 3,600. I don't think that number can be generalized uh, 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 to cover the 50,000 that mm. we are dealing with now. So mm. the teachers that have, have named themselves the unpaid teachers, they, they are not even yet recognized as teachers. They are yet to be given staff ID. They are the ones that are going but, to But why, to why are they in the classrooms teaching then? Yes, that is the problem. The problem is neither coming from the teacher association uh, nor the government, but it is coming from DES. DES refused uh, to go by the directive by government that uh, these people should not be recruited because they don't have financial clearance for DES at then. But we don't know through whichever means uh, these people were recruited into the So, so the Ghana it, Education, it, Education Service is flouting government's directives, if you like. With regards to this particular uh, issue, I think that is the word to use. And, uh, and uh, if government uh, deems it fit, uh, we think that those people that flouted those orders should be brought to you because there must be at least law in order. And if the government is not having money uh, where it can issue financial clearance to such an institution for recruitment to be made, the directives have been given, orders to be carried out uh, have been refused. I think uh, it is very bad on the part of the mm. Let, Let's get back to this 1% uh, uh, of those who are using fake certification. Do we know how they got themselves uh, in the field? <laughs> That is the problem. Once the director is able to flout her, then that director is also capable of maybe bringing, of course, a family member or somebody close to him without due diligence, making sure that uh, the person possesses the right qualification before the person is recruited. And this is some of the issues uh, we are facing. This is why we tell government that uh, that shouldn't be yet because those directors are there in place of government. They are representative of government. So if they cannot carry our orders from the government, we, the teacher association, will only seek for our people to pay because they never flouted any other uh, orders and uh, they were asked to bring what, 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 what they should bring. So even if the person brings something that is fit, it is incumbent on the director, uh, uh, whether a regional director or a district director, to make sure that. Uh, uh, the documents are well perused and the necessary uh, action or scrutiny done before the person is being recruited. So uh, it still boils down to the regional directors and district directors mm. of doing the right thing. So how do we resolve the issue of payments of those teachers who are not employed, if you like, by governments, but by the GES? <laughs> yeah, that, that, this, this, this particular one, uh, I think it has been resolved already. The government thought it wise that they are citizens of Ghana and that if they have worked genuinely and they possess the right education, if, uh, government, government thinks that they should be paid uh, for their work done. Therefore, the, the, the Auditor General, as I said earlier, also went out and made sure that the audit was done on the field and those are pushed and that we're having the right document were attended to, and that is the report that is ready now. With regards to the state certification and others, I think that no government or no union will, will, will back a situation where somebody will present state certificate and they will call for the person to be. I think that it's the other way around. We will rather help government to apply the laws of the country. So after the payment, do we know if they cease to be teachers or they still are in employment? Do they still have the rich, jobs? Rich, rich people are in employment. Those, those who were employed by GES without government's knowledge. Government has decided yeah, that, that we that, will pay that, them. That, but that, will they continue <laughs> to be in the job? That is mostly dependent on the, the, the government and the GES. If really they need their services. 
and they think that uh, we still have the room to accommodate them. I think the best thing uh, to do is to accommodate them. It will be uh, 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 financially and economically unwise to say you do not need their services and that they have been in the system, you pay them and you release them to go. Uh, the teacher unions, we wouldn't be happy because we are in the system and we know the deficit we have mm. in terms of uh, people's teacher ratio. And I think that once they are paying them, uh, they are going to also retain them in the service and make sure that whichever training is needed is given mm. to them to upgrade themselves to the level mm. of the uh, professionalism. That sure. Uh, finally, Norbert, are you communicating with your members? Because we get a lot of questions as to uh, where are we with the validation, when are we going to be paid and things like that. Yeah, we do communicate, but it's unfortunate the only communications uh, that we normally go by is through the media. Uh, we are now making, all the unions are now making sure that we have a database that has their phone numbers that we can send a blast to whenever a uh, situation or the need arises. But well, currently, what we do is we come to the media and we explain to them that, that one, you know, it's just a probability. So anybody, as I'm speaking to you, uh, anybody that tunes in into your studio uh, uh, is ready and is capable, is lucky to get the information. But the other person that is listening to other media uh, may, may not have the information. That is the problem we are facing. But we do well and make sure that whichever information is out there that is for public consumption, we come out and uh, we give it to them. Mm. All right, Norbert, we'll leave it here. Enjoy your Easter Monday. Thanks for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm All right, we have to move on to other issues on the chief of Eduma, Sir Nanansa Kwao, the fourth, has challenged political party leaders to minimize their divisive tactics to make way for real socio-economic change to materialize. At the fifth anniversary celebration of his reign in the traditional area, Nanansa Kwao, the fourth, said divisive approach is to blame for the slow pace in Ghana's development. He's urged politicians to exhibit maturity in the quest for development. With a libation and display of musketry, Nana Ansakwa IV announced the start of what would be a colorful anniversary celebration of his reign in Adumasa, a town in the Akwemo Kingdom in the Eastern Region. Together with other sub chiefs and queen mothers of the traditional area, Nana Ansakwa IV was paraded on the streets of Adumasa before being taken to the main anniversary ground where the rich culture of the Akwemo Kingdom was displayed. Paramount chief of the Akwemo Kingdom joined the celebration. In a welcome address, Nanan Sokwao shared his achievements and vision for his subjects. The proud chief could not hide his excitement about the day. I'm not a paramount chief. Uh, for those of you who are not very abreast with culture, let's say a DC was hosting an event and three presidents came to his event. That's how I feel. I had Dodo Wamaihene, I had Togwe Sri, he didn't come but he represented, and I had Kwamu Maihene come to my event. For me, it's very humbling. See, I say this as a joke, yeah, so please take it as a joke. But in 10 years, people will pay bribe to bring their kids to my school. What, what I mean that, you know, people will queue up to want to come to my school. As the country prepares to go to the polls in November, Nana had a word for politicians. I urge politicians to grow up. I urge politicians to also try and enlighten the, the masses. You see, if the, if the masses understand what the governance is about, they will choose the right person. But it's because they don't understand what the whole thing is about. They choose the one who comes to funeral the most, the one who come, makes the bigger donation. They vote for, oh, this guy comes to funeral a lot, he's a good MP. But they don't understand that the MP is there to read laws and make laws. Nana has not been in office for long, but his leadership style has caught the attention of many. The district chief executive of Asojaman, Thomas Ampimnyako, promised to support forward thinking 
African chiefs like Nanan Sokrao to complete the educational project he and his wife have started. We have seen some projects that he started, and that is why I said uh, I equal to him for the five years that he's been working with us as a chief. We are committed to support him so that the next five years we'll have a better story to tell. He also promised to fix the road network in the area. Among other issues he touched on, the paramount chief of the Akumu Kingdom, the DC to fulfill his promises. I want to congratulate Nanan Sakwao the fourth on his fifth anniversary as the chief of Adumasa. And I want other sub-chiefs to emulate his example. We as a people are doing our part to support government's developmental agenda. We expect government to also do the same for us by supporting us to undertake projects in the Akwemu Kingdom. As part of the celebration, a new community library was commissioned by Awo Dansoa, wife of Nana Nsakwao, the fourth, after she was introduced to the people of Edumasa for the first time. Mm. We say congratulations to our own Nana Nsakwao. May you reign forever. Now, residents of Sota in the Shai Osudoku district say they have been living in fear due, due to gunshots heard every night. The chief killed together with two relatives in a vehicle by unknown assailant has caused fear and panic amongst the people there. Uh, my colleague with Adom FM, Kwame Yanka, has been uh, speaking to the acting chief of the area, and he now joins me uh, with details of that conversation. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. So what has he been saying? Well, like you rightly said, they have been living in fear. Um, acting chief, he's uh, Asafache, Odoi the third. In terms of the traditional setting, he's next after the chief. So when the chief's not available, mm -hmm. he then. And according to him, for the past week, they have been living in fear because after the, their chief was killed, each night they hear gunshots. Um, they don't know who is behind this, whether um, it's those who killed the chief mm -hmm. or probably another group. But then. Police would um, promise them of some protection, and since then, um, there's they, no protection as it were. So, so these gunshots are not coming from the police? No, they, 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 they can't confirm. What's the peculiar story about this community? Is it land or what? Yes, like you rightly put it, um, it's about land. And as a Fache, Udo the Third, we confirmed this that well, their area is prone to land litigations, um, back and forth, land gas, and, and all that. So, um, it, it's such a, 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 a big issue. But who there. sells the land? Is it not them? Yes, they do. But then, you know, um, let's say you have an acre of land and it belongs to a particular family. So family A, if this generation is supposed to sell up to this end, the next generation have to take over and then beat development or housing projects or anything, mm. then the rest could be um, used for. But then if generation A is probably selling everything now, then the next generation is being cut off. Mm. So they believe um, even within the family, there could be some tension. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but have they reported this latest incident of gunshots to the police? Yes, yes. As of what Audrey the Third um, told me that, yeah, they, they've done this. And they expect that the police will be out there to protect them, but uh, they don't see any police officer out mm. there. What, what do they know about the, uh, the killings? Have they been able to resolve? Do they have any ideas as to who did it? No, um, there have been no. Um, there has been no arrest, as it were. Um, even he was trying to suggest that they picked intelligence. That's according to the acting chief. Mm. That um, the murders were after nine people, including the chief. So now that three are gone, six more um, are likely to go. And they've also reported this to, 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 to the, the police. police. Yes. Right. Okay, we'll leave our conversation here. Enjoy your Easter Monday, okay. even though you're working. Same and that's you. Kwame Yanka. He's my colleague with Adum FM. Now, despite the initial staff agitations that threaten the success uh, of the IPO management of ADB, they say the IPO has been highly patronized by both locals and foreigners. Corporate subscriptions are high, but retail uh, buyers have increased since last week. We've got a lot more details of this and more in business right here on News Desk. <laughs>